Ohio State Buckeye fans, you got yourself a new offensive coordinator in Chip Kelly, but what will this offense look like with him running the show? I want to talk through a couple of basic concepts and basic expectations I think you can have for the Buckeye offense this upcoming season with well, Howard playing quarterback for you, Travian Henderson, Quinshawn Judkins carrying the mail, a bunch of other weapons within this Ohio State offense, and most importantly, Chip Kelly calling the whole darn show. So before we get into that, Ohio State Buckeye fans, make sure you're subscribed. We've had a lot of y'all join us here in the course of the last month. We talk college football, whether they're playing games or whether it's something else going on. We're talking ball on this channel, on this show, The Hard Count, every single day. So we appreciate y'all being dialed in. Feel free to follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at JD Pakel to tell me more of what you want to see on this very platform. So the obvious part with Chip Kelly, the MO, the headline, if you will, is Chip Kelly and what he does with tempo. And tempo is fun when you talk about like a sit down interview and talking about Chip Kelly, what, you know, his his offense is supposed to do. No huddle, no mercy. Like all those things are fun in principle. What, what tempo really does for Chip Kelly in this offense, it's the great edge. It's a chance for them to simplify the defense, because if you're a, def a defensive coordinator and this offense is running the play every 15, 20 seconds, it is ex exceedingly difficult to be complex. Like, we don't have time to get this disguise in for our coverage when you're already snapping the ball. We have a hard time getting the call in while they're already lining up to snap the football. So all those things combine to make this offense that much more dangerous because it limits what your defense is able to do against them. Because at that point, then they dictate terms to you as an offense. At that point, they can wear you out. And probably as important or more importantly, when you're going no huddle, the rules in college football dictate that. You're not allowed to substitute unless the offense substitutes. So with that being the case, if Chip Kelly and this Ohio State offense gets you in a personnel grouping that they feel confident in, or that they feel comfortable being able to run up against or pass against whatever it ends up being, you're stuck in that until you call timeout or you fake an injury or what have you, or until they substitute. So that's crucial. That's a huge part of what this offense is going to do in Columbus. I fully believe that. And uh, it's going to allow the Ohio State offense to stay a, hep ahead, a step ahead. I truly believe that. Now, when it comes to what you can expect from an X's and O's standpoint, Chip Kelly from his time at Oregon with Darren Thomas and Dennis Dixon and Michael James, Kenyon Barner, and what they were then, he's evolved a little bit and kind of tinkered with his offensive system to where they are now. But I still think that is going to be a zone run football team. And you hear people talk about gap scheme versus zone schemes, and it's just a lot of football jargon. Really what this means when you're a zone run football team, it means that you don't have to be physically dominating at the line of scrimmage. Now you want to do that, but it's not nearly as important as it would be if you're calling a power run play or something of that nature. The bottom line here is the, the catchphrase that you need to think about is creating a lane for your running back. That's it. That's what this offensive line is going to try and do consistently throughout the course of Chip Kelly's time calling the offense in Columbus. I feel that way for a couple of reasons. One, just historically, this is who Chip Kelly is. And yes, he's, he's not going to exclusively have zone runs in this playbook. That would be just ridiculous. But I do think it'll be the bread and butter, going back to what I said. It's, it's who he's been throughout the course of his career. He's told us who he's going to be as an offensive coordinator for the most part. The other part of that is he's going to utilize his personnel. Any good offensive coordinator that's worth their salt, like Chip Kelly is, knows that the scheme is important, but it's secondary to the personnel that you have in place. And the personnel they have in place in Columbus, especially in that backfield, Quinshaw Judkins, Travion Henderson, two of, I believe, set to be the best running backs in the Big Ten Conference next year, or if not the country in terms of what they are as a one-two punch, they're going to make sure they feed them consistently. Now, Will Howard is a guy I'm really excited about within this offense, especially with Chip Kelly running the show, because he's got some mobility to him. However, I don't think it'll be a thing where you saw – uh, DTR, the quarterback at UCLA a couple of years ago, and how Chip Kelly utilized him. Different player than Will Howard. I think you'll see Will Howard be more of a factor with his legs in the run game, uh, in, in the red zone, rather. I think that's kind of the, the spot you'll see him shine the most. But what this offense is built to do from a basic principle level is put strain on the linebackers and in that same way put strain on the safeties. Where they're going to do that? Alignment. Run pass options or RPOs, as every analyst on TV likes to talk about and explain to you, and motions. The alignment is going to be crucial in the sense that they're going to line up in certain ways that take linebackers out of the box and give them a better look to run the football to. If I have less big people close to the line of scrimmage, 
I have a better chance for my big people on my offense to be able to move the line of scrimmage and to be able to get yards and ultimately score touchdowns. That's pretty important. That's what he wants to do. Now, like I said, RPOs. A lot of what they want to do in this offense, I believe, will be creating options and answers for Will Howard. And the way they're going to do that is, just like I said, they're going to run the football first. But when that happens, if they try and overcommit, as we see a lot of teams do in college football, especially when you have guys like Steve Sarkeesian and different play callers throughout the country that use the RPO system well, if you can run the ball first and, and cause those linebackers to creep up, that creates some real estate behind them and will allow Will Howard some really pretty pictures to throw the football to. A lot of wide open spaces, to quote the Dixie Chicks. I think that's the Dixie Chicks. I'm not totally sure. But with that being said, on top of those things, I mentioned motions. And it's not going to be, you know, this crazy complex. You see three or four shifts, three or, you know, this, this crazy motion that's going on. It's going to be a lot of jet sweep across the formation. You'll see, you know, it kind of pull the linebacker one way. And when that happens, again, just like we said, creates some over committal by that second or third level of the defense for Will Howard to throw the football to. I think you'll see them try and do a lot of that. But the reason that's going to work is because they're going to have success running the football first. I think everything in this offense is built run first, and then once you get the picture you want, throw the football second, creating explosive plays and creating good things happening for Will Howard. So all that's to say, to kind of review this thing, they're going to go fast, going to get the defense off balance, dictate terms to them. They're going to run the football. They'll have a bunch of different ways they do it. I think the bread and butter as we've seen from Chip Kelly over the course of his career, will continue to be zone run schemes. Create a lane for your running back. they got some really good running backs with Quintron Junkins and Trevor Henderson. And then Will Howard will factor in, I think, a little bit closer to the goal line and then put Shran on those linebackers. Get their eyes moving with the motions. Give them a tricky alignment to where they have to go out and cover a slot receiver or they have to go cover a running back. And then that way, get a nice picture, create some space for your playmakers and be able to create some space for Will Howard to throw the football to if they want to overcommit in the RPO game or if they want to be undisciplined with their eyes. Run, set up the pass, make Will Howard's life that much easier. Now, he'll still have to be able to drive the spaceship. Don't get it twisted. Will Howard's going to have a lot on his plate, but I think a lot of what he does will, uh, if he makes the right decision, you'll have really big plays, I think, from this Ohio State offense. So Ryan Day now, trusting his offensive coordinator when he was in college, to call the plays for his football team here in 2024. I'm super excited to see what this looks like. I think this is going to be a, a fascinating science experiment, if you will. But they got the personnel to do it. It is no secret. They got the personnel to do it. And uh, they got now, in my opinion, the play caller to do it. And to do it, I mean, to accomplish all their goals of winning the Big Ten and in the perfect world, winning a national championship. But we'll talk about all that when it gets here. Those are the basic principles for this Ohio State offense. Can't wait to see what it looks like in the spring. If you want to talk about it with us here, make sure you're subscribed. We appreciate y'all. We love y'all. We're going to keep this party rolling, and we will see y'all next time. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.